Hey there friends, welcome back. So today I wanna show you some awesome functional ways that you can use your Passion Planner weekly layout. Um, the thing that I love about Passion Planner, you don't have to stick with just the timelines and I certainly don't. There's many different ways that I have laid out my week and so I wanna share with you some of those particular ways that I do that. Um, so I already have kind of in pencil here uh, a few examples that way it just kind of saves some time. So we're just gonna quickly run through the top three ways that I like to use this particular layout and I'll probably kind of throw in there a couple other ideas as well. Um, it's not just limited to three particular ways that you can use this layout and it's just really something to get creative with and find what works best for you. So let's start off, I have here, this is my academic passion planner that I have kind of put off to the side. I'm using it now for um, kind of my, uh, I'm, I'm dabbling in sticker making. So this is kind of my trial planner for my stickers and just to kind of get creative with some ideas. So I'm using this spread because I'm not actually going to be planning in this. And we're going to start here on Monday. So one way that I've been loving my layouts is by using my top three to do items at the very top of the day. So that way, if there's only three things that I have time to get done, what would those three things be? And I would then be able to kind of focus on a little bit more if I happen to have the time, but these three are going to be like, no if, ands, or buts, got to get them done. So what I like to do, I'm totally obviously not using a ruler here, so sorry if this <laughs> kind of makes you cringe, um, but I go ahead and I just write in top three, and I like to do a little bullet point circle, and I mean, you can make that a square, you can make it a triangle, you can do whatever you want there, a one, two, three. Um, I like to do just a little circle because I like to go in and color it in when that particular task is done. It's just more prominent to me and it makes me feel good to see that dark circle completely colored in and just taken care of. And I also, if you could see here, I put a little bit of a, I put, a space between each bullet point because I do have bigger handwriting. I don't want to be, you know, um, limited to just this one line. But if you are someone that has smaller handwriting, it would work just fine to have, you know, one line for each bullet point. That way you would be taking up less of the day. So say you have an appointment, you know, at 830 that you want to definitely make note of, and that would only come down to that particular area and your bullet points would still be up there but you're not taking up as much of your day so like when i do this it takes up um my morning until about 9 30 but i'm okay with that um when i'm at work i don't have any specific uh, appointments or tasks to keep track of because i have my work computer and everything is just right there um, so I'm okay taking up more of my morning. So after I have my top three written in, I go ahead and I just kind of use the remaining section as I see fit. So if I want to go ahead and journal, I will journal in this section. If there's like some um, grocery shopping, you know, I will go ahead and just write groceries here and make my list if I want to have it right there. And I kind of, again, just use this as I need it. I know that my three most important things for the day 
are going to be at the very top and that is going to be my goal get those three things done um, so you know besides just kind of using this as a running to-do list or grocery list or a work list obviously you can go ahead and mark your appointments um, and keep track of your appointments throughout the day so this is the method that I've been using most recently and I really enjoy it because again, I don't have appointments to keep track of. I don't necessarily need the timeline for every day. Now, Wednesdays, which we're gonna get to, Wednesdays I have off, I do have appointments on Wednesdays, so it changes a little bit. But, so first example is top three at the top there. The remaining section, kind of list out whatever it is that you need done. Make notes of anything that happened that particular day. And of course, you do have your personal to-do list here where you can keep track of more tasks that you are wanting to get done that particular week. So moving on to the Tuesday section here. So how I have this set up is divided into three, kind of similar to like the Erin Condren lineup, or not lineup, <laughs> layout. Um, I have three sections here, which you could use as uh, your morning, afternoon, evening, your work, personal, home, literally whatever it is that you want to have that uh, track. So I'm just gonna write, um, you know, I'm just gonna write morning. This is the most common morning, afternoon, and evening. So if you want to, you know, set up your tasks to be broken up during the day, then you can go ahead and do so like that. If they're not specific timed tasks but you know okay the laundry you want to get done in the morning and you have these meetings and then the afternoon um, whatever else the task is or other meeting the evening time whether it's dinner exercise picking up kids uh, after school or to events and so you pretty much you separate it up that way or you do your personal home work this has been really great for me in the past I have used this quite a bit and I think this is a very nice functional use of the timeline section without being restricted to the times. So that gives you a little bit more separation of your day if you like to break it up with those times of the day. So moving on to Wednesday, this is where I would follow, well, a Wednesday in general is where I would follow more of the timeline because I do make most of my appointments on Wednesdays since I work uh, the other four days of the week. I work nine hours. I don't have time to go to doctor's appointments, so I cram it all in on Wednesdays. Now, if you, whether you have a day off or if you have a regular work schedule, another way you could use the timeline is as an actual timeline. So say you want to really keep track of how you're spending your time each day uh, from the moment you wake up to the moment you go to bed. So six o'clock in the morning, if you wake up at that time and you want to keep track, kind of just almost like a journal entry, or if you really are trying to build routine, this is when this could be very, very helpful. So six o'clock in the morning, say your goal is to wake up at that time. Then from eight to 4.30, you have work. Then you could easily just kind of section out this time. Sorry again for not using a ruler, but you could easily section out that time for work. And you have plenty of space to make your lists that you need as well, you know, from what you're required to get done at work. There's plenty of room for lists. You can jot down your lunch section to keep track of that. 
Or if you are like myself and you've got that day off, you just need to keep track of those appointments, just do exactly that. But I just kind of drew this out as, you know, if you were using this planner as your everyday planner and you have a regular, you know, nine to five job or whatever it might be and you have appointments to keep track of during the day, this is a, the most um, popular way of using it, of course, because it is a timeline. But after, you know, using this section for your work tasks, making notes, whichever way you want, circling your appointments within that time, you can go ahead and make note of when you want to have dinner, when you're going to bathe the kids, when you want to be in bed by. So this can be very much almost like a journal entry in a way so that you can look back and see, okay, how did I spend my time this day? Or what is it that really popped out from this day specifically? So this is where I like to make notes, you know, for dinner, that's a very broad um, word right there. So if it's something special that we did, like we met with some friends at a particular restaurant, I will go ahead and jot down what it was we did and with whom we did that. So I will make little notes, even with the wake up time and I have it set for six o'clock in the morning to wake up. Okay, well, did I do some exercise? So I might little make a little note there that I exercised for 20 minutes or did yoga. So I really love this because you can be as vague as you want or really put in information that you will always have on hand if you're needing to look back or again, if you're trying to create better habits. So these are the three main ways that I have used my passion planner. Now, of course, another way that you could do it would be to use some washi tape if you want to get a little bit more fancy and cover up, if I can find the start of it, here we go, and cover up the timeline. If you're someone that just does not like timelines, like it bothers you just looking at it, Super easy fix is to simply toss some washi tape on here, make it a little decorative if that's what you want, and then you've got that out of your vision, and you can use this as a running to-do list, or mark down your appointments however you want to, highlight. I love using highlighter for color coding. I also love to use, these are from a sticker shop on Etsy and they are made specifically for the timeline. So I will also use stickers to cover up my timeline when I really don't have any use for it that week. So a lot of different ways you can get creative with this planner, this planner and it's great because each day can be different if you really want it to be. And like I had mentioned, Wednesday, since I have off, I really use the timeline. But the other days, I just stick to my top three and that's it. So there's so much wiggle room with this particular spread or layout. And I love how functional you can be with it or how creative you want with it. But I, again, really think that these are three fantastic ways to functionally use your passion planner. And it's really about being creative. Just use it as you see fit, what works for you, and have fun with it. You know, it's part of, yes, this is to keep you on task and to make sure that your mind, your brain isn't getting overwhelmed holding everything in it. So have fun with it, make it messy, make it neat, whatever it is that works best for you. So I hope you guys enjoyed this information. I hope it helped you kind of figure out what type of layout might work best for you if you're not one who uses the timeline. 
I know these have worked so incredibly well for me for all different reasons and I love that I can easily switch it up and go back to any one of these methods. So if you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. I would love it if you would consider subscribing. Also make sure to hit that notification bell so you are alerted whenever I post a new video. I hope you guys have a fantastic week and I will see you in my next one. Bye.